think everybody knows his biography. I'm not going to bore you with that, so without further ado, I'll just hand the mic over to you. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What a great day to be an American, a great day to be a Virginian, and a great day to be a member of the Charlottesville Albemarle GOP. You know, they used to say that the Charlottesville GOP could only meet in the phone booth. I'd like to see the phone booth. <laughs> this is fantastic. What a great, great day. I can tell you, it's so wonderful to, of course, have the honor of representing you all in, uh, in Washington during this very, very important time. Uh, it is wonderful to see uh, the enthusiasm as we march towards November. Uh, I am reminded as I look up across this room about all the hard work that took place in, uh, in 2010 uh, as we uh, embarked upon a huge challenge, a huge challenge to take back the House of Representatives and get rid of Nancy Pelosi. Really? And I can't help, and he just walked out of here, there he is. He knew I was going to do it to him. I can, as I look at, at, at one of, or as I remember one of my favorite memories of, uh, of the last campaign, and it's a memory that we can all enjoy together. It was a memory when, of, of three days before our election, the President of the United States, Mr. Obama, decided that he was going to come down and campaign for our opponent. He decided out of all 435 congressional races, he was going to pick one, and he was going to come to Charlottesville, Virginia. And so, as you all recall, he came, he clogged up all the, all of the highways and bridges and everything in the whole town, and they shut the road down so he could get here. And there was, there was a fella that was a part of our team at that point who, uh, who, was, who was doing a whole lot of work at the headquarters and did everything with our signs, uh, um, among so many others, but he had the truck. And my favorite memory of, of, uh, of that visit of, uh, of, of President Obama was, was, was when it was determined that he was going to be flying into the Charlottesville airport. And Eric Seitz, come on Eric. Eric Seitz. Eric Seitz said that he wanted to welcome, personally welcome, President Obama to the 5th District. So he went out and he got on a hillside at the end of the runway where Air Force One landed and had to fly right into a hurt U.S. Congress sign. And all I have to say, all I have to say, uh, as I look back on that fine memory, all I have to say is, Mr. President, hope you'll come back to the 5th District anytime, anywhere. Thank you. I've enjoyed my, uh, our, our day today. It is a beautiful day. It's such a beautiful day. It reminds us what, uh, what we love about our country, what we love about Virginia. I've enjoyed being with Susan Allen up in, uh, in, in uh, Standardsville at the Strawberry Festival. Uh, this morning, you know, she's gotten a, a very good reception on behalf of her husband George. And uh, one of the one of the things that uh, I, I think is true, maybe hard to believe, but I think the people down here in uh, in Central and South Side Virginia like Susan even more than they like George. But I I am I'm, I'm proud to support George in this election uh, and because of his conservative record and, and the experience that he will bring and and and, and, the, and, and I, what I believe. It will take to defeat Tim Kaine and to make sure that, uh, that, we, uh, that we win this election uh, here in Virginia where it will be a crossroads. But let me say this, and I think that Buddy uh, said this very, very well. We're very fortunate to have so many good candidates uh, in, this, in this primary election. And uh, the enthusiasm on our side uh, with someone like Bishop Jackson uh, in the race who speaks so articulately on, uh, about our conservative uh, views. Uh, we thank each of them for, uh, for, for being in, involved in this race and working so hard for our conservative principles. And as Buddy said, I think that at the end of the day, we all have to remember that this is not about a single candidate. This is about the future of our country for our children and grandchildren. This is not about Robert Hurt. It's not about George Allen. It's not about Bishop Jackson. It is about the future of this country. It's about who is going to be able to make sure in November that we pick a new majority leader in the United States Senate and send Harry Reid back to Nevada. So, so with that said, let me just say a few things. It's been a great honor, uh, again, to represent you all in, uh, in, the, in, in, uh, in Washington as a representative for the Virginia's 5th District. Uh, back in, in, in 2010, I think that we sent a strong message because of the hard work of each one of you all here. We sent a strong message that we didn't want any more trillion dollar stimulus packages that only led to 8 plus percent unemployment. 
didn't want any more health, you know, Obamacare health care proposals. We didn't want any more cap and trade proposals that would run our energy costs through the roof, especially at a time when our economy is where it is. We didn't want any of that. We wanted controlled spending. We wanted reduced spending. We wanted reduced size of government. We wanted a sensible energy policy in this country, and we wanted to get the government out of and, and, and the red tape off the backs of all the Main Street businesses and all the small farmers all across the 5th District, all across for Virginia, and all across this great United States of America. And we delivered that message, and I can tell you in January, uh, we on the House side have gone to work to do accomplish all those things, reducing spending. In reforming our entitlement programs so that they will be around for the next generation and not run our economy into the ground. We have worked for a sensible domestic energy policy, one that would create thousands of jobs uh, in, in the short term, hundreds of thousands of jobs in the long term, and give us low and stable energy prices. And above all, make it so that we don't have to depend on folks like Ahmadinejad for our energy resources. And, 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 and we have stood for those policies from the, from, from the beginning. Policies that would reduce the red tape on our small businesses, reduce the unnecessary bureaucracy, and ultimately balance our budget. But the problem is, is as we have worked on our side to do these things, we have sent these bills, dozens and dozens of these bills, down to the United States Senate, and what do we get back? We get crickets. We get crickets. We get nothing. You know, Harry Reid proudly proclaimed uh, earlier this year, after we had adopted a budget that would cut $5 trillion in spending over the next 10 years, would uh, reform our Medicare system in a way that would strengthen it now and preserve it for future generations, would bring our budget into primary balance by 2015, we offered our side, we put it on the table, not necessarily claiming we had all the answers, but starting the conversation, a serious conversation that we have to have if we want our children and grandchildren to have a, a, a stronger nation, a stronger future than we've had. And what did Harry Reid say? Harry Reid said, we're not doing a budget. Don't care what the law says. It'll be politically unpopular for us to put a budget on the table. We're not going to engage. That's the kind of arrogance that we've seen coming out of Washington, D.C. for the last 20, 10, 20, 30 years, and we can't afford it. We can't afford it. So these elections are so vitally important for that reason. So you have the Senate election that's so important. Preserving the House majority that's so important. And let's be clear about something. We have had no leadership from this president over the last three years on the most important issues of our time. No leadership. And that's why we are going to have to work doubly hard in November, because he has doubled down in Virginia. He's working hard in Virginia. In a lot of ways, we have some catch-up to do uh, when it comes to making the phone calls and, and, uh, and, and, and getting organized in order to take, 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 take this message to Washington in November. I can't thank you all enough for the work that you have done. I can't thank you enough for the work that you're going to do between now and November, because it is going to be absolutely indispensable to guaranteeing that we, uh, that we, that we again, leave this place better than we found it. You know, our founders, uh, back in 1776, took on a pretty large task. And they all were there uh, at the signing, and they pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor for the idea of limited government and unlimited prosperity and freedom. That's what they did for us in 1776, and, and, and many of them lost everything they had, many of them lost their lives in this pursuit, so that we could sit here on this beautiful day in Charlottesville, Virginia, and be thankful for the blessings from above. That's what they were willing to sacrifice, and let's not forget that every generation since that time, every generation since that time, and I salute those of you who are veterans that are here, and those of you who have children that are serving us, uh, serving this country so proudly, but let's be clear, every generation has done its part. Every generation has done its part when it came time to deliver us from a crisis. Well, we face a crisis now, and the question is whether or not we're going to answer the call. And it's within the power of each of us to make that happen. In November, we've got to make it happen. We've got to make it happen for Virginia's 5th District, for the state of Virginia, and for this wonderful country that we love and that we want more than anything to pass off stronger and brighter and more beautiful for our children and grandchildren. God bless you. Thank you for your support. Let's get to work.